this thing is great. David employs people here. He's making a positive difference in society here. This positivity here. He is a role model here. People look up to him. Today he did an event where he, he cut heads for people who can't really afford it and help kids get their school supplies together. Nobody does that. I know wealthy people who don't do this kind of stuff. Crack grabbed my mother and really, really grabbed her by the neck and uh, took control of her life. So from kindergarten through college, all of my memories, uh, childhood memories are, are, are filled with drug addicted parents and the stuff that goes on with that. Whether it comes from, you know, not being there, not having food in the house, getting electricity and phones shut off being in and out of county jail and in and out of prison. Me and my other brothers being shuffled from different family members' house. Uh, I remember hearing my aunt and grandmother argue one time over who was gonna get my mom's food stamps when she was in county jail. Now the next year, my sophomore year is when my life got tricky and it happened when my mother relapsed, uh, she relapsed again. Got back on drugs, ended up getting herself back in jail. Now at this time, we didn't have a family member to take care of my younger brother Donovan, who at the time was 13. Me thinking that I could do anything, I stepped up and, and stepped up to the challenge and accepted responsibility to take care of him. As a 19-year-old kid who's supporting himself without any family help, to take on a 13-year-old out of nowhere, it's, it's a heavy task. It's a heavy task that I tried to do, and it ended up leading me back to, to the old fast lifestyle that I left behind. I came up needing money, needing money for food, needing money for uniforms, needing money to take care of to take care of him. And I started doing some of the old things that that were around me when I was when I was brought up. Um, things with guns, things with drugs, things with stealing, things with stolen property, just fast money that that was around me growing up that I was able to leave behind when I started college, I let back in my life. And that's where things got tricky. And the latest and greatest thing at the time is everybody was, was doing credit card fraud. This is the late 90s. This is before they had any type of identity theft laws. This is before they even called anything identity theft. And on the internet at the time, you can buy all the equipment you needed to steal, copy, manufacture, make, and, and program credit cards. And that's what I ended up getting involved in. And in 2003, I was arrested. And I was arrested and, and charged in a conspiracy ring with nine other people and they connected my ring with a couple other rings and they labeled me the ringleader or the supplier of all the rings. So I end up going on trial facing 42 years in prison. I realized my first day in jail that doing the crime wasn't worth it because even spending one day in jail is definitely not worth it. After being in jail about three weeks, one of the OGs came up to me. In, in, in jail, in a prison, you call OG, it stands for original gangster. But we more use it, you know, towards guys that have been around, towards you to have a little bit of knowledge either knowledge of the system or knowledge of life. And they more, you know, try to help and 
and keep the peace, keep the problems down and maybe talk to the younger guys and steer them to the right way instead of the wrong way. And what he told me is jail and prison will change you. It changes everybody. He said it's up to you whether it changes you for the positive or whether it changes you for the negative. And he let me know that I would be the only one that could decide that, that I would be changed, but I can go, I can go positive or I can go negative. And after that conversation, I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't let jail change me for the negative, that I would use it to improve, to improve my life, to improve my way of thinking, and to change me for the positive. So physically, mentally, spiritually, for, for five years I was focused on refining those, those aspects and those parts of my life. So I was released from California State Prison February 10th, 2009. Here's my parole card here. I still have it to this day. I keep it in my nightstand right next to my bed. And I keep it there as a reminder of what not to do. I keep it there as a reminder of, of my past, how far I've come, and also help me gauge on where I need to go. Courage can't even describe how it feels to get out of jail or to get out of prison, especially after that amount of time. I was on pause for five years. The world moved ahead for five whole years. The world's changed. How do I fit in? Where do I fit in? How do I adapt? You drive through the city where you're from, the city where you live. Streets are new, buildings are new, houses are new. Old stuff is gone. It's, it's like a time warp. So when I was released from, from, from jail, I might not have slept for about two days. My brain wouldn't stop moving. What was I going to do? How was I going to make it? How was I going to make an honest living? How was I going to put myself in position to never feel like fast money was my only option? Well, when David got out, I was doing really well financially, and so I offered to help. And he was just like, listen, man, I'm just getting my feet back under me. I'm getting my sea legs back, and, uh, you know, we'll revisit something shortly. Because one thing that I do know is that David is one of the more ambitious people that I've ever met, and he's very, very sharp. And so that same skill set that he used to create a, a white-collar empire, as the newspaper calls it, is will allow success in whatever business that you apply it to because the business acumen is already there. The savvy is already there. During my senior year of high school, he had a brain aneurysm. The challenges in raising a young son, a toddler, and also taking care of my disabled father, it's, it's really impossible to do how I want to because nobody gets the time or the energy they deserve. I cut hair about 60 hours a week, and that's not including the other time that the business requires as far as internet, social media, paying bills, dealing with drama, taking care of clients, and then, you know, obviously take care of my duties for the evening, make sure dinner's ready, make sure little David's clothes are ready the next day, get him showered, get him clean, get him to bed, and the challenges are endless. I guess, I guess the challenge is really is just time. I honestly don't know how I get so much done in the time I have. It's just a lot. It's overwhelming. You know, regrets, it's family. And I guess it's easy for me because it's not hard to think about when things were worse. I'm not homeless, I'm not in jail. Times were worse. I mean, I'm grateful, you know, I'm grateful for the responsibility. I'm grateful for my son. He's been my focus. Just the thought of being away from him has kept me on a narrow path. He's kept me focused just looking at him. Sit on my lap.
So listen, we're going to say, what's your name? And you got to say your name. Excuse me, sir. This is an interview, and I want to know what your name is. David Patrick Plunkett III. Yep, that's you. Who's David Patrick Plunkett Jr.? David Patrick Plunkett Jr. is my dad. He's your dad? And do you love him? Yeah. Who is David Patrick Plunkett Sr.? He's my grandpa. Why do you love him? Because he does stuff that I want him to do. Well, he's supposed to because he's a grandpa. So my dad's a different situation. I love him to death, but he was a he was a terrible dad. He wasn't there, so now I'm in position where I have to be his sole care provider. You know, and it's something that I do you know graciously, and it's part of my life. And I'll continue to try to be the best son I could be, and that's all I could do. I'm David Patrick Patrick Plunkett, Plunkett. Senior. And you had brain surgery. How many? Five surgeries. Five surgeries. You had a brain aneurysm my senior year in high school. And when you had the surgery, we hadn't talked for what, about two and a half years? Sorry. I, 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 I'm... I accept your apology. I love you. I love you too.